Good afternoon. I like seeing this full house. Happy New Year. And welcome to our first headliners for 2023. My name is Tara Poulton. I'm the Vice President of Public Policy and Workforce Partnerships at the Manatee Chamber. And I am absolutely thrilled to see you all here today. We are also very excited to have Dr. Scott Hopes, Manatee County Administrator, joining us today for the State of the County Address. Uh, I have to admit something. I'm a local government nerd, so this is a big day for me. Anytime there's county or city business, it's, it's a favorite topic of mine, so I know it's going to be a great presentation. Now, if you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd now like to recognize our elected officials. When I call your name, please stand and be recognized. County Commissioners Amanda Ballard and Jason Bearden. From Bradenton City Council, we have Mayor Jean Brown, Councilwoman Pam Coachman, Jane Coker, Lisa Gonzalez-Moore, as well as Councilman Josh Kramer. <laughs> Joining us here from Congressman Vern Buchanan's office, we have his district director, Sally. I saw you here earlier today. Where are you? There you are, Sally. Thank you all so much for your service and your commitment to making our community such a wonderful place to live. If I can take a minute to recognize our headliner sponsors, Florida Power and Light, The Mosaic Company, The Realtor Association of Manatee in Sarasota, and our newest headline sp headliner sponsor, Manatee Memorial Hospital. Thank you to our platinum sponsor, platinum investors, Brown and Sons Funeral Homes and Crematory, Carr Riggs and Ingram, the City of Bradenton, IMG Academy, Manatee County Government, Manatee Memorial Hospital, MCR Health and All Care Options, The Mosaic Company, NDC Construction, Pittsburgh Pirates, Bradenton Marauders Baseball, Raymond James Wealth Management and Bruce Body, Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, and South State Bank. We will now allow Pier 22 to serve our lunch when we return Jeff Podobnik, the Chamber's 2023 Chairman of the, of the Board and his first official duty <laughs> will be coming up here. In addition to being our Chairman of the Board, he also happens to be the Vice President of Florida and Dominican Operations for the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club. He will be coming up once food is served and he will officially introduce our speaker. So enjoy lunch. Uh, my name is Jeff Podobnik. I am the uh, Vice President of Florida and Dominican Operations for the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chairman of the Board for 2023 for the Chamber of Commerce. So before I introduce Dr. Hopes, um, I know uh, Tara introduced all the politicians in the room and I got my eye on all of you because there's only been a couple of you that have thrown out the first pitch at a spring training game, and we're going to add that, add to that this up and coming year. But the two that have thrown them would be Mayor Brown and Dr. Hopes. And I think, Dr. Hopes, you went all the way to the top of the mound, onto the rubber, and threw a strike. Gene, I'm not sure you went that high, and I'm not sure if you threw a strike, but... There, there is a video. I have the honor of welcoming County, County Administrator Dr. Scott Hopes to the podium. 
Dr. Hopes officially became county administrator in May of 2021. He is responsible for carrying out the policies and directives of the Board of County Commissioners. Dr. Hopes holds a doctorate in business administration from the University of South Florida, um, as well as a BA and a master's of public health, uh, all from USF. He has extensive experience in both the public and private sectors, including as chief executive and elected official, university trustee, entrepreneur, and an educator. Prior to serving as our administrator, Dr. Hope served on the Manatee County School Board. Together with the county commission, Dr. Hopes is focused on moving critical projects forward, all while ensuring investment in the infrastructure needed to create the quality of life we all want for places where we live, work, play, especially play, and own businesses. So please, with a big round of applause, welcome Dr. Scott Hopes. get this out I know but I'll be moving around oh it's taped in here so you're stuck with me up here thanks Jeff uh, you know I really appreciate it this uh, this has been a fascinating opportunity uh, since since April 1st of, of 2021 uh, I'm gonna focus a lot on on the infrastructure uh, but just aside because many of you remember April Fool's Day of 2021 and Piney Point. Uh, Piney Point's not in the slide, but the good news is, the good news is that, believe it or not, one of the stacks, one of the stacks that did not have water in it is almost closed. I flew over it a couple of days ago, and they're pushing the dirt in. Uh, it's been lined, and they're ready to cap it. The well is drilled. If you go by there, you no longer see the equipment. The injection well is drilled. They are forming the pad for the pretreatment infrastructure to stay on schedule. Uh, the uh, development services and utilities are working uh, with the contractor to implement a temporary pretreatment process. So the goal, which I told them they have to meet, uh, April 1st of this year, they will begin dewatering the stacks for the final closure of Piney Point. Which, which is an amazing feat. Two years from the time of the occurrence to get a permit, drill a well, and begin you know, dewatering those stacks is a pretty big deal. Whoa, that was a few steps. Okay, boy, touchy. All right, the Board of County Commissioners for 2023. What a 2022 we had. What an incredible election. Uh, and the actually two of our members were introduced. Uh, Ms. Amanda Ballard, who is here, Mr. Jason uh, Bearden, and Mr. Mike Ron. And they have hit the ground running. And we... we uh, we always do this, and originally they, I was asked to do this, I think, in December, but the calendar didn't work out. I'm telling you, somebody else needs to do this. Can we just, really, I do know how to use these things. Can you play that video for me, please? Christmas time is here again. And we'd like for you to know that we wish you the best. That your family be blessed. And may your cocoa cup overflow. We'll keep doing what we do just for you. Like keeping the roads free and clear. Count on us to come through. From public safety to roads crew. As we get closer to a brand new year. From our front door steps to the ones who serve our best. From where I preserve to beachside. Tis the season for compassion and reason. And we'll let you off for the warning this time. So from the administrator's desk and from all the rest, we hope you know we're sincere when to you we say in our own special way. Merry Christmas. And we can't wait. We can't wait. We can't wait to start the new year. So we're starting a new year. 
but but with this, I want to I want to say something about it because it's come up in board meetings and other things. I want to talk about the face of Manatee County and the face of Manatee County government. The face of Manatee County government is not me. It's it's not the board of commissioners. Okay, the face of Manatee County government is every person. There are over two thousand, and there'll be a slide of what we've done with the recruitment. The face of Manatee County government are the over 2,000 employees and the seven commissioners that hold this badge. And I want to tell you when I go through this presentation what it means to me and what it means to those employees when you see them in the grocery store and you thank them. It's not an easy job. And when you see all the work that's been done in the past year, hopefully you can appreciate how the Board of County Commissioners and the employees of Manatee County government are working every day to improve the quality of life, to help traffic move faster, and I cannot emphasize enough, that little bit of a thank you when you least expect it goes a long ways. All right, a new era. Okay, where is our budget now? When I spoke with you last year, it was a little shy of, I think, two billion. This year's budget is about $2.4 billion on the gross side, and it is a little over a billion on the net. And if you, if you, you know, kind of follow that, those, those numbers seem to be pretty impressive, but wait till you see all that we're doing with that money. I pressed it once. I'm going to press it twice. There we go. All right. Some of the highlights in business operations. We, we, between our finance department and the Board of County Commissioners, reduced the millage by 0.3. That follows a 0.2 millage decreased the year before, okay? What I'm going to show you is the Board of County Commissioners accomplished a two-plus billion dollar budget while two consecutive years of lowering taxes. Yeah, you can clap. That's a big deal. All right, the highlights from an operations perspective. We in in increased by about 55 positions. 17 of those are for the new library that will be opening this year in Lakewood Ranch. Five in 911 communications. The hospitals can appreciate that because when you call 911, you want somebody to answer, right? You want them to answer quick, take action, and get you the services that you need. 16 in utilities technician positions. Why do you need 16 more techni technicians in utilities? I will tell you that last year, I think it was over close to 5,000 uh, new homes hit the tax rolls. That's a lot of new utility customers, right? Lowering taxes, adding positions, but look at where those positions were added. Two guardian and litem. Unfortunately, we have children that need representation and need to get the care that they need. The sheriff's budget, again, the Board of County Commissioners working with our finance department met 100% of the requested needs of the Sheriff's Department. I don't think he's got his new boat yet, which was approved like two years ago, but I hear it's being delayed because there's like air-conditioned living quarters in it. Uh, health insurance, modest. Those of you who are employers, we were able to budget so that it was only an 8% increase in health insurance benefits. The national average was well over two, uh, two digits. Salary compensation, lower taxes, increased increase positions. We were able to give employees an additional 8% with 5% being cost of living and 3% for pay for performance bonuses which are yet to go out. The goal is to have them out before spring break. But when you think about that, the Board of County Commissioners added all these projects. It was 3.9% cost of living increase last year for employees and 5% this year. Why? 
we have to be competitive. Unfortunately, we're all competing for the same labor. But when you think about lowering taxes, getting roads built, building new parks and libraries, and able to increase compensation for your employees so we can maintain a high quality workforce to work for you is a major accomplishment. I'm gonna go through this one quick. Okay. The, uh, you may not be able to see the breakdown here, but the, the adoption, uh, adopted millage rate, of course, runs through the general fund, transportation, libraries, parks, children's services. Uh, we, had to, we implemented the environmental millage this year. If you remember last year, one of the ways the board was able to cut taxes is we didn't collect it. We funded the environmental account with reserves last year. Uh, now, in addition, in addition to this, what have we done? We've still maintained a healthy reserve balance. So the budgeted reserve contribution this year is 600 and uh, uh, total reserves, uh, about $634 million. That is well below the, the statutory cap at 10%. It puts it at 3.8%. And the reserve cash balance is in compliance at 18.2%. But with all those reserves, let me tell you how healthy Manatee County government is. After lowering taxes, giving employees cost of living increases, today, today, yesterday, yesterday's pooled cash fund is $1,487,087,687. That's what Manatee County government has on hand as of close of business yesterday after lowering taxes two years in a row. Debt service, one of the things that I was asked to do before I was hired is focus on infrastructure. So where are we on that? We are in a healthy position. We successfully bonded $232 million towards the end of last year for infrastructure projects and the convention center expansion and renovation to coincide with the opening of the convention center hotel, which now is flagged under the Marriott flag. Debt payments, okay. We're still within a very comfortable range. That's helped by our AAA rating by all the bond agencies. Uh, this, you can't really read it. Uh, let's move on to the capital improvement plan. Last year I gave you the breakdown. This year we're going to go through the highlights in this budget. 589 total projects. 43 new projects were added. 262 projects got additional funding. 327 projects did not need additional funding. 127 projects in the IST, uh, which has a listed total of 207 projects. Highlights. Maybe I press it slower. All right, the highlights. The premium, uh, the premier sports complex swimming pool and racket center. Uh, that contract, it's in design. The, the uh, construction uh, manager at risk contract will be awarded, I think it was awarded Friday. So that project is going to move. Uh, it is going to include a 50 meter pool. Any of you out there that have swimmers in your family, the board of county commissioners heard you uh, and we went from a 25 meter pool to a 50 meter pool including a therapy pool, and the design has an area for a 25-meter uh, warm-up pool in the future. If anyone likes to donate to that project, we think we could do it for about $7 million, and we can talk about local match. If you would like a private contribution credit, we'll give it to you. Uh, Animal Shelter, the, uh, the update to Bishop, which was an incredible donation by uh, the Bishop family, we will be uh, demoing the back building 
in building a new building which will allow us to move animals out of the palmetto shelter and then we can repurpose the palmetto shelter uh, canal road projects canal road was a project that was on the books for years it wasn't moving uh, part of the reason why it wasn't moving, I will tell you, the answers I got was it was going to be too difficult. There was too much land that would have to be acquired and we would never be able to do it. I will tell you that that contract, I understand, is going to be awarded for the first phase of construction. I think it's Friday. Uh, so Canal Road, any of you up in this area, Palmetto, you know, that area, Canal Road is going to be under construction. That project is moving. The Lakewood Branch Library, we already talked about, that is well out of the ground, uh, and it is an incredible sight out there. Uh, projects of record, too small for you to see, uh, that the uh, Board of County Commissioners has put on their legislative platform, both in D.C. and with the state, is the Fort Hamer Bridge expansion and four laning of those areas of Fort Hamer uh, leading up to the bridge. Uh, the US uh, 301 to Fort Hamer Bridge four lane is at 39 million and US 301, uh, Fort Hamer US 301 to Golf Course Road is 16.7 million. Big six projects, those we've been talking about, they are moving and they're moving at light speed. There is a, a website that you can go to, but these top projects are 59th Street West. If you live in that area, the district commissioner and chair, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, has a town meeting at GT Bray this Saturday morning. Is it 9 o'clock? At 9 o'clock. Any input there, he'll be happy to hear from you. Uh, he, he scheduled on a holiday weekend so everybody can plan on recovering after the town hall on Saturday and take Monday off. 75th Street West project. Uh, a little note on 75th Street West. Uh, I think the current strategy is to get that completed before disrupting 59th so that you have alternate pathways to move. Uh, 63rd Avenue uh, East Project, the Lena Road Project, Lorraine Road Project, and Upper Manatee River Road Projects. These projects were all funded through the bonding, so we've got a timeline to meet. I can tell you those projects are going to be moving and they're going to get completed because we will stay within bond compliance. So this is not a wish list. This is a list that the Board of County Commissioners has approved and they have directed staff to move these projects forward. Infrastructure sales tax. That is the link. I'll get these. Uh, they have a copy, and I'm sure you're going to send it out to all the members. I encourage you to go to the Capital Improvement website for under financial management. When you click on these projects, they're updated regularly. You will be able to go down to the map level detail with the GIS system and look at the property that has been identified for a take, a partial take, no take at all, so you can like not worry about it. Uh, it as the project moves, you will see near real-time progress of these projects on the, on the Capital Improvement website. So it's a tool that everyone has access to, and you, you will be constantly informed and updated as you see these capital projects moving forward. Infrastructure sales tax and the CIP process, what do you see happening? You, I mean, you see people coming to Manatee County. They're not just moving here, they're visiting here. When they visit here, they spend money. When they spend money, it increases tax collection for the infrastructure uh, projects that does not depend solely on property taxes. The board has been able to take advantage of our growing economy and reducing property taxes for those of us who live here while benefiting from those that visit here. And, and it's a, a very effective tool. Now for the, the 
recently awarded projects. These are projects where the contracts have been executed. Most of them have either gone to the board or they're getting ready to go to the board. Moccasin Wallow, US 41 to I-75, about $50 million. Moccasin Wallow Road, Segment 1, US 1 to 115th Avenue East, about $28 million. Coquina Walking Trail Replacement, any of you who enjoy the Coquina Trail, we know that there's roots and things like that that are growing under. Uh, the, 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 we're taking advantage of the contractor that's finishing up the parking lot. Those of you that may have been concerned, we had a contractor in Miami that we sort of fired. Uh, we brought in, fortunately, a local contractor. I think Woodruff has it, and, and they have gotten on it, and we're going to get that parking lot finished so you can take full advantage of Coquina Park and enjoy the uh, renovated trail. Uh, Canal Road, Segment 2, 17th Street East to 33rd Street East, uh, two-lane um, um, functional, about $4 million. Erie Road, 69th Street East, signalized intersection, about $2 million. Cooper Creek Boulevard at Honoré, a, a signalized intersection, about $2.5 million. Okay, 45th Avenue East, 45th Street East to Creekwood, uh, August 23. Uh, these are projects that are either complete or nearing completion. So uh, by August 23rd, that will be complete. I will tell you we ordered the steel for the bridge to go across I-75 for 45th. Uh, if everything continues on the success rate that we have, by the time the steel is delivered, both ends will be there. We'll be ready to put the steel into place and get that bridge completed, which will send 45th across uh, I-75. And quite frankly, that, that project, if you've been out there, I mean, we accelerated the bridge over the Braden River. If you remember, we had a contractor that banged a hole in the uh, water uh, main under the river, so we need to accelerate the bridge going over the river because that's where we're running the new water line, uh, and that's proven to be very effective at getting 44th accelerated all the way across uh, across uh, I-75. The cool thing when that bridge goes up is that that steel is is pre-painted, and it's going to be in kind of the Manatee County government colors, and the paint is supposed to last for like 30 years. Uh, so it will be recognized as, as truly Manatee County. Uh, Moccasin Wallow Road, uh, let's see, towards where, I didn't go backwards, did I? No, okay. Uh, the uh, 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 59th Street, what, let's see, projects and design. Are you sure I didn't go backwards? Uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. No, no, no. So, okay. So uh, uh, the, the Fort uh, Hamer segment, uh, March of 23rd, uh, SR62 at Erie Road, US 301 intersection by August 23rd will be completed. Erie Road sidewalks, those are complete from 69th Street East to Martha Road. Uh, Rabonia drainage and sidewalks, summer of 2023. Uh, Memphis sidewalks, summer of 2023. 9th Street East, SR64 to 301, rebase and surface, that's complete. Uh, 53rd Avenue West, 26th Street West to 43rd Street West, rebase and resurface uh, February of 2023, so watch for signs and avoid that area. Uh, rural road paving uh, year one, four million, that I think was pretty much completed. Uh, projects in design, 75th Street West, Manatee Avenue 21st, 59th Street West, Manatee Avenue to Cortez. These are all four-laning. 63rd Avenue East, US 301 to Tuttle, uh, four-laning. Upper Manatee Road, SR 64 to Fort Hamer, four-laning. Lorraine Road, 64 to SR 70, four-laning. And Lena Road, these are basically the big six. They are in design. What does that mean? <laughs> when they start hitting close to 30% of design, we go out to contract for the construction of it. So these things are moving and they're happening. Um, continued in design, 44th Avenue East, Creekwood Boulevard, Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. We talked about that. Moccasin Wallow Road, Segment 2, 115th to East, Sawgrass Road, uh, 27th Street East to 26th Avenue East to 38th Avenue East, uh, two-lane rebuild, 60th Avenue East, US 301 to Mendoza, 
uh, 60th Avenue East Mendoza to Trevesta Canal Road, which we discussed, US 301 to 17th, widening uh, to, to four lanes. These are projects that are moving. Not only did that bo the board, those that were elected in 2020, commit to you that they were going to be the infrastructure and the road board, they have done what they said they're going to do, and we, as their staff, are, are, are putting these things together and we're moving it. Uh, these you're going to have to look at <laughs> when you get the slides. This is a list of everything else that we've got moving. The administrative uh, building parking garage, we've got the bids in for the design work, as you know. Uh, we're going to have to replace that garage downtown. We're going to get through the, we're going to move into the design phase and we're going to coordinate it with all of the other construction downtown so we don't have a crazy disruption. Um, the Lakewood Lance Library, as you know, is, is, is nearing uh, its completion. The Kingfish boat ramp, we're going to be working on that. John Marble, uh, which uh, has been awarded, these are all that have been awarded, John Marble. Uh, Lincoln Pool, as you know, was completed. The Premier Racket uh, and Aquatic Center we talked about. The uh, Premier, we're putting in a sheriff substation at Premier. So the sheriff will have a new substation there. Uh, that's been awarded in design. Uh, the uh, infrastructure projects at Premier. The uh, Lincoln Basketball Courts, if you go over, you see that they're under construction. They'll be completed this year. Uh, the Ron DeSantis Park. Uh, that contract's been awarded to uh, Tandem. That's moving forward. Uh, New Memphis Cemetery, the Braden River Pump Track, which has been changed. It's no longer going to be the Braden River Pump Track. We, we heard the Little Leaguers. Any Little League moms and dads out there, we heard you. We are not going to put a bicycle pump track on the baseball field. We are going to spend the money to shore up the baseball field that was built on top of a land site. A land a landfill site and it's coming under we've gotten with engineers we now know how to dig it up put in a surface it will be the first artificial turf little league baseball field in manatee county it's going to be incredible just want you to know the board of county commissioners heard all the parents i heard all the parents including like my girlfriend um uh, and uh so we're taking care of that uh braden river concession stands uh, the uh, BACC expansion renovation, Robinson Preserve uh, has got work, Coquina boat ramp, uh, more pickleball courts. Um, the board chambers is going to get technology upgrade as soon as supply chain gets in there. Uh, we've got uh, some EOC remodeling work, EMS uh, station at GT Bray. At GT Bray, we got sanitation lines, uh, dive well conversion. Uh, EMS station at Moccasin Wallow. We've got additional fuel tanks that are going in. We've got uh, the clay courts at Bray, are comp which are co says complete but not open, but I think they are. Let's see what else. Uh, ones that we haven't talked about uh, the old jail conversion. Uh, we've uh, the board has looked at that and we're not going to use that for veterans homeless why because we've been working with the board and we've been working with uh, community veteran services we have a private company uh, that has partnered with a funding company a veterans organization where we are looking to uh, it's already been surplused we are going to be donating the board will be donating land uh, and the board has surplused it to, on 66 to move utilities out and there is going to be permanent veterans housing in an entire facility for transitioning and veteran services out on 66th and Manatee Avenue using private dollars uh, and so that that is something and it's uh, and, and and so that is a project that the board initiated uh, in a, a trip last year to Tallahassee which was followed up by a trip to DC and we met with uh, the uh, chair and vice chair of the uh, Veterans Committee. They connected us with this organization. The organization came down, we showed them a number of sites and they felt that that would be the best location for our veterans. And so you'll, you'll stay tuned, you're gonna see an incredible project 
that is going to be moving forward, which is a great example of how government can facilitate private organizations meeting some of these community needs. All right, let's talk about people, okay? So, when, when I came in, in April 1st of 2021, there were 2,073 FTEs and there were 1,942 filled positions. We've added FTEs, but we've been very careful to not fill positions that we did not fill, fill were needed at the time. But we are up to, uh, as of the end of this year, 2,035 employees. So given the state of the economy, we've been successful at recruiting the talent, exceptional talent, into Manatee County government without growing government, just because you got FTEs out there in case you need them, we are being judicious and we understand the board's commitment to the taxpayers to only spend the money that is needed to be spent to meet the priorities of the elected officials who are answering to their constituents and these are the 2,000 people that are actually getting all this. There is too much to put into this update because so much has moved. I encourage you to look through the PowerPoint when you get it. I encourage you to, to uh, take a look at the website. And I really appreciate you know everyone that is here. Um, and I'm open, and the two commissioners that are here and our staff are open for any questions. So if anybody has any questions, please come up to the mic, please. Dr. Hopes, uh, Mike Meehan, Manatee yes, County Citizen, how are you? Uh, I'm asking this question from the perspective of the average Manatee County citizen, 50% uh, of whom are really just living paycheck to paycheck. That's where I'm coming from on this question. Um, having just taken a look at the interim financials through the end of July of last year, the surplus for Manatee County is $222 million, $222 million surplus. Um, and this is on top of previous surpluses of over $100 million going back for at least the last five years. Um, so my perspective is... Uh, what, what kind of relief can be made available to our population that lessens the burdens they've been carrying for the last three years just based on inflation, very high inflation, and also the result of the COVID epidemic? Um, and, and so my, my direct question is, uh, what in your opinion or any commissioner that cares to answer the question um, are the, is the probability for additional millage cuts taking place in upcoming budget years? Um, I, I think there was great strides made with the 0.2 and the 0.3 cuts, and I would love to see that continue. And also perhaps something even more meaningful in terms of financial relief, which would be a variable tax credit based on an average of the last five years' surplus, which could be applied to citizen property tax bills um, in the upcoming year. Thank you. you know, that's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a great question because, you know, you and I, you know, have, have a history, uh, both at the school board and, and here. And uh, the reason why I showed you that, that, that pooled cash number on how much money is there, uh, the short answer to your question is my job as a county administrator is to operate Manatee County government as effectively as possible, which includes efficiency, which includes fiscal efficiency. And, and I heard those that brought me in of what the goals were, and the goals were to get the infrastructure built and lower taxes. Two years in a row, we delivered it. My goal every year, as long as I'm in this position, is to manage Manatee County government so that the infrastructure is built, we increase the quality of life, we have a great quality of life, we increase it, and we continue to lower taxes. I believe, I believe that fiscal policies that have been followed over the years and were handed, I'm not blaming any current elected officials because 
uh, the, the policies that were in place, specifically with regards to fully funding multi-year projects before you can even start them, I believe is a very poor fiscal policy, which has resulted in billions of dollars sitting there while the board is being compelled to tax citizens. And so one of my focuses, which I've discussed with the, the board members, is that we are going to look, and they have asked about everything from the investment policy and, and things like that, is to address the issue. No business or government I've ever been part of and or led had to fully fund multi-year projects, especially these road projects, before they can start them. That may have been a policy that was implemented during the recession. I don't know, and I don't care. It is a bad policy, and it prevents us, it prevents us from deploying cash that we already have, and we had to go out and bond and pay 4% interest, when in some cases last year we weren't even making any interest on that one point something billion dollars in cash. So the long answer I just gave you, the short answer is if I do my job and I do my job well, you will see a recommended budget going to the board in July that includes continuing to meet the needs of the community and offering up the opportunity for the board to lower millage again. Thank you so much, Dr. Hopes, and certainly your presentation and the, the action of the board has shown a response to what our community has identified as one of the most pressing challenges, and that being infrastructure. Um, what we hear from our chamber members as well, and part of their definition of infrastructure is certainly the availability of affordable housing for our workforce. So I know that the board has workshopped this a number of times, and there's more on the horizon what conversation can we expect and potentially what policy ideas do we have related to affordable housing? Well, I think you have a number of them. Uh, you know, we've done, the board has done some funding to help get projects that are on the books. Uh, on the economic development side of the conversations with uh, employers that are coming into the county, you're going to see that in the property south of Amazon. We basically have been talking with them about building workforce housing and affordable housing on site. Uh, so there are two significant projects around one of the projects down there. As you may be aware, the legislature passed legislation that if you propose and commit to 10% or more affordable housing, you can build housing on any property regardless of the zoning. And I think you've seen the board being committed to, to address that need. Uh, there are a, a number of projects that were sitting that needed a little bit of assistance and the board has stepped up. The last board meeting and the board meeting before that, they approved, uh, in some cases, gap funding. Uh, my, my concern from a strategic perspective is what we have right now, we have a lot of focus on rental properties and from my perspective and, 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 and my experience, that's a short-term fix, okay? We've got to create an environment where we can see the construction of housing that folks can buy and get a 30-year fixed mortgage because that's about the only way that you can provide predictability for affordable housing. We need the rental properties because that can go up a little bit quicker and we can house more people. And we've got about 4,000 units now that have been approved that are starting construction. But we have got to come up with models, our uh, half-dwelling units. Uh, the, the board approved and we contracted with a consultant through the Florida Housing Coalition to set up a community land trust in order for the board to make land available for people to build affordable homes, which can be sold to individuals on leased land so that the, 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 
the Loras can tie that land to affordability regardless of how many times that property sold. But the key, the key is getting people into home ownership with a predictable mortgage payment. Um, that's that's a great topic, and I want to kind of piggy out, piggyback on that because we talk about rentals, and right now the rentals are more than the mortgages. Are we doing anything in the county to? I know we really can't tell landlords. I am a landlord myself, but you have one bedrooms going for fifteen hundred dollars, and I think if we still see this growing and getting out of control, we're going to actually see more people not being able to even afford to rent either. And then that's going to right. lead, also lead to homelessness. So what are we doing to combat that, to work with the builders, to work with the actual community to help people even be able to afford a rental until they're able to buy a home? Yeah. Both, both the building department and the board of county commissioners, whenever you hear that they're approving a project with a Laura, uh, that is an agreement between the county and the developer or the builder, uh, and in some cases it's the, the builder and the operator, to ensure affordability using, you know, the HUD, the HUD calculations. And so we have a number of them that are under construction or will be under construction. And so that's one way government can do it. The other way, as I said, even if it's rental properties, we, we can make, we, we have made property available for multifamily units. And we tie those units to a LORA, uh, which is a, a land use restriction that ensures that according to the federal calculations, those rental rates will be affordable. And, and, and I'll tell you, how, and, and those of you who are employees, you know how serious, Mr. McDougal here, the CEO of Manatee Memorial, he has a hard time, you know, getting nurses to come here because rental rates are so high. And so he's paying, in some cases, he's paying as much as like a $10,000 sign-on bonus for nurses so they could afford to come here. And so it's a serious issue. And that's part of the problem with having growth and having a community where the quality of life is so high. And it's really more affordable than most of the places these people are coming from. But for us, uh, those of us that have been here a while, I mean, I'm a perfect example. Look, when I was on the school board, when I was on the school board, I had to live in the district that the governor appointed me to. When I took this job, and I could live anywhere in the county by state law, I'm, I'm confirmed with the same thing as looking at, you know, the affordability. The prices are, are twice, twice what they were when I took this job. And I'm one of those persons that is, is looking and saying, God, now I can live. Because unfortunately, I, I sold my property on the river three weeks before I took the job. Uh, so that was a painful thing. But, but believe me, I feel it too. Uh, and so, but we do need, because, you know, we, 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 I mean, just EMTs, teachers, I mean, even though the school board has gotten the starting teacher salary up to the highest in the state, it still isn't enough when you're having to pay, you know, 1500 to eighteen, you know, to $2,000 for rent, and, and you're looking at the, the, the median home price now in Manatee County is higher than Sarasota. You know, it's tough. And, and so the, the board is committed. Uh, Commissioner Cruz is kind of leading the charge there, and he's got exceptional experience both on the funding side of it and the marketing side of, of affordable housing. And so you're going to find that we have an exceptional mix of highly talented board members now that are working collaboratively. We're moving into a shared governance structure, which is what I tried to do with the prior board, but it, it just didn't work. And so if you look back at the past two meetings, both the work session and the board meeting, they identified among themselves board members to work with management and administration in certain areas. That's shared governance. That will get your elected officials more directly engaged with the operations and administrations of county government so that their talent, their skill, their education experience can be shared at a higher level and more frequently with administration to move your priorities forward. All right, Dr. Hopes, thank you so much for uh, the State of the Union of Manti County. That's it, until next month. <laughs> thank you all so much, we'll see you next month. <laughs>